All right, everyone. What is going on? Welcome back to another episode here on the Lure Lab, a part of the Serious Angler Network. And we're cruising here. We're past a year on the Lure Lab, and I just want to say thank you to everyone who's been tuning in. And we have an awesome weekend uh, coming up this weekend for us. So getting this episode out, and then we are heading to Bailey's, you know, the main host, the brainchild of the Serious Angler Network, his rehearsal dinner tonight, and then tomorrow as you are listening. So today, as you are listening to this, it is actually his wedding day. So if you listen to the episode and you follow Bailey on Instagram or Facebook, on his uh, social network pages, or even on the Serious Angler main page, shoot him a congrats and well wishes for his upcoming marriage as of Saturday night, where we can't wait. We're standing up in the wedding. It's going to be um, it's going to be a good old party. I can't wait to go and just celebrate him and Lon. And I wish them the best marriage possible and a life full of happiness. But on to the other note, we have an episode to talk about here today, and we are diving into blade baits. And a year ago, we did an episode with Kurt Hofig, which is a guide on Cayuga Lake. In the Finger Lakes, he also has his captain's license, so he can go up to like Lake Ontario and usually goes and jams on really big smallmouth. And this is going to be like a refresher course slash an add-on to uh, what Kurt talked about. So if you missed that episode, scroll on down, you'll see it, Blade Bait Fishing with Kurt Hofig. And we dived into a particular blade bait in that episode, and that is going to be a part of this episode here, too. We're going to be touching back on it, but today's episode here on the Lure Lab, we are diving into my top three blade baits, and each one of their functions serves a distinct purpose on my boat. We're going to dive into what the blade baits are, when to use what color, and also line, reel, and rod. And then there will be a fourth one, which is the honorable mention, which is going to be our do it molds juice of the show, which if you've tuned in here before, you know that at the end of every show, there is a do it molds juice segment. And that will be the fourth slash honorable mention blade bait. And I don't have anything those on me at the moment. They're in the boat and it is downpouring out. So I'm not going to go back out and grab it out of the boat, but let's dive right into it here. We're going to start with my number one favorite blade bait to use and my setups and line is all going to be the same so i'm going to save that for the very end but first i'm going to talk about the best blade bait in my opinion on the market and what you can do with it so the first blade that i like to throw is the fish sense binsky and there's four primary colors that are really really like in this blade bait Silver, gold, the sexy shad or shad color, and then goby. Those are the four colors that I use. And when I use them, depends on the color, like the light conditions, also watercolor conditions, and where I'm fishing it. So we'll start with silver, right? Silver match the color of the sky. I use silver when it is cloudy, rainy, dreary out. You want a ton of flash. And that's what the silver one will do. And the best size, in my opinion, if you listen to Kurt's episode, he talks about the quarter ounce blade. I'm not a fan of the small little ones. I like bigger. I'm all about a half ounce. Every single blade bait I own, except for a couple, are three eighths or a half. But silver, cloudy, miserable days. Gold I like when it's sunny. The sexy shad will work on both sunny and cloudy, but excels more on a cloudy day because of the opaque color pattern on it it's painted on so it, it's a very dull flash but it stands out brightly on those dull dreary days and then the fourth one is goby i only use the goby color binsky when i'm ripping it on rock or shell where i think that there's going to be gobies around and the color of it is very similar i have my number two blade which we're going to dive into here in a second but the color of the goby is very similar to this blade bait here it's going to have a green pumpkin, dark brown top with a green belly to it or chartreuse belly. It looks just like a goby when it's down 40 feet and you're ripping that thing up and down. So the cool thing about the Fish Sense Binsky is it has these four holes on the top. And I know I keep reiterating back to Kurt's episode, but the four holes on the top all serve a distinct purpose. 
The second one is the only one I pretty much use it on. I found that that works best for me for vertical fishing straight up and down underneath the boat or even casting it out and yo-yoing it back. And that's why the Binsky is my number one blade bait choice. And that's because you can vertical rip it, you can rip it hard, and you can cast it out a distance from the boat and yo-yo it back while ripping it pretty hard. So it doesn't follow as much. Comes with really thin wire, super sharp hooks right out package. You don't need to change them until you start bending them out. So don't reef on the fish too hard because they will flex. But this blade bait right out of the package is fantastic. So let's dive into blade bait number two here. And I already held it up. This is the Jackal Keyburn in a half ounce. And I actually only use this one in like that goby pattern, green pumpkin green. And... This one, I am ripping out a rock. So you'll see that it's already been beat up. And this is a new blade bait to me this year. But you can see that it's dinged up pretty good there already. And I've only been using it a couple of days because the blade bait season is starting. But what I found is because of the hooks on here, you just have your treble, your single, it's like a dual hook that pops up. So it doesn't get snagged as easily when you're ripping it in and out of rock. And I found this one actually rips really well vertically and also on like small pitches out away from the boat, 40, 50 foot. So if you're looking for something that you can really rip vertically up and down, the Jackal Keyburn is a really good one. And also not so much a yo-yo technique. I found the Keyburn is really, really good if you cast, like burn it out and you slow roll it on the bottom. So it's just vibrating down on that bottom. I've gotten a couple fish to eat it just by slow rolling it down the bottom and feeling that blade bait just vibrate on the way back to the boat. Now, for those who are tuned in and listening here, if you ever switch out the hooks and put split rings on the Keyburn, I'm interested to hear what split rings you use and what hooks you put on because I would be interested in getting some more shad profile colors in this and trying it with treble hooks. But I like this one. Another one to honorable mention here is the depth circuit vibe i haven't thrown this one yet but it has the same style hook configuration on the bottom so i think this one will be really good at getting out of rocks as well now the third one and this one's kind of a hybrid for me because it comes in a ton of really really cool colors and that is going to be the Demiki vault and i only use really two colors right now one is for stained water, and the other one is for bright sunny days because I haven't got my hands on a gold one yet. But this is a Demiki Vault. I love that it has a black beady eye. It's got good hooks right out of the package. They could be, you could replace them. We'll talk about the hooks that I like to replace them with here in a minute. It has three hook point, like three swivel spots here on the, the top. If I remember correctly, I like the middle one. But if I remember correctly, if you put it in the front, that's much better for casting it out and yo-yoing it because that allows the head to go down and pops up and head goes down. And then the third one here, I believe, is for vertical ripping. I, I have it set right now on number two. Haven't played around with it too much. But where I found the Demiki Vault works really, really well is casting it out like 50 to 100 feet away from the boat and just soft rips. And what I mean by soft rips is just lifting the rod tip from like, three o'clock to one o'clock and you lift it on a semi slack line so you just feel brrr. so when you lift up you, you as soon as you feel that blade vibrate that means you've already pulled it a foot or two off the bottom so it's just brrr, let it fall feel it hit the bottom and just quick soft rip up so brrr, drop 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 and let the fish dictate it i found with the dominky vault you can't rip it too hard because otherwise it'll follow up and come back in a big ball and you'll ruin half your cast but it works really really well on a real soft gentle yo-yo when you're casting it out away from the boat i have caught them on this silver flashy color and the chartreuse white like i said i like this one when it's dingy or cloudy silver when it's cloudy and clear then there's like a blue sexy shag color, which I have right here. I'll use this one when it's sunny because it's foiled and the water is clear. So, um, but this has probably been the one that catches the most fish for me. And now the other thing that I do really, really like about the Keyburn 
and the Dominky Vault, as opposed to the Fish Sense so far, is the fact of how durable they are. Like, this thing hardly has any flex. Same with the Keybird, almost no flex. If you, and this is what makes the Binsky so great. It's such a thin piece of metal that when a big one gets it, sometimes I've had this tailpiece kink over and it's easy to get it back. But that's the one downside to the Fish Sense Binsky is that it's not as durable as a lot of these other blades on the market. So let's dive into setup real fast. There's two different rods that I will use for blade bait fishing, and they're both six foot ten. They're both alpha angler rods. One is a slasher, and the other one is more of an S glass, so it's a slasher light. And the reason why I use the two different rods, one, it depends on the way the fish are getting it, and two, it depends on which blade I am throwing. The, the light, the slasher light allows it to be a little bit more forgiving if you rip too hard with like the Dominky vault. And if I want something to rip really hard, I'll throw a regular slasher because it's more, more stout of a rod. It's got a quicker tip as to where the LTE, the light kind of is that it has that glassy tip. So when you pull, it takes a second to get that bait started. Now, the reason why I like the light is because it's a treble hook rod. So it's not going to be too far powerful and pull the blade bait hooks out of the fish's mouth where a slasher sometimes you'll lose them it's a great jerk bait rod it works phenomenally for blade baits as well it's just sometimes the regular slasher is a little too quick in the tip and that causes your bait to foul a little bit more and that's one of the reasons why i've started using the slasher light now line is 10 or 12 pound fluorocarbon usually like 100% Trilene or Daiwa Samurai are my two favorite fluorocarbons at the moment. And then reels, it's always faster is better, an 8 to 1 or a hot, like a 7-4 if you want to go a little bit slower, but always an 8 to 1. I use left and right-handed reels because I'm guiding, so I never know exactly what clients like. Me personally, I like to rip a blade with a left-handed reel, because I can keep constant contact when I cast it out, falls. Sometimes I'll eat it on the immediate drop instead of switching hands. I just find it's easier for me to work it as opposed to my left hand. I, I don't know why. That's just my personal deal. Don't make fun of, fun of us up here in the north. We do some weird things, okay? So let's hop into bait number four or the honorable mention, which is the Do It Molds Juice of the Week as well, which isn't... Um, <clears throat> A company that you can go and buy supplies to make your own tackle, right? And then do it molds. You can make your own blade bait. They have stickers that you can slap on there, foiled stickers. So you can paint them. You can put whatever split rings on, whatever hooks you like. And it's a really cool thing to make your own tackle. Blade baits, if you're ripping them through rocks, you're going to go through a ton of them. Hooks are going to doll out. So you can go to do it molds and just buy bulk packs of hooks. It's a great way to save a lot of money. But also by building your own tackle, you can make colors that other companies don't offer. And that might give you a distinct advantage over some of your competition when you're fun fishing or even fishing a derby in the same area as other people who are ripping blade baits or using whatever other techniques they want to do. Now, one other side note that I do want to throw in here real fast with all of these blades, I found in round bend hook works a lot better than an EWG. And I think that's because fish eat a round hook better and it gets better in their mouth than a wide gap. A wide gap, in my opinion, is for fish that slap at the bait and a belay bait. Usually the fish aren't slapping at. They're coming in to kill it and eat it. So my favorite hook for changing out once the hooks doll or break or flex out is a owner ST36 in a size six for almost all of these half ounce blade baits. But you can go down to like an eight for some of them, depending on the body shape. Or if you have like a one ounce, or you might want to go up to like a four. So those are basically the tips that I have for you today on the blade bait fishing. There's a ton of them on the market. These are my favorite three plus a fourth for the honorable mention. And I hope everybody enjoyed this quick little refresher that we're doing here on this blade bait fishing. It is fall time. It's one of the best times to use a blade bait as the water is falling 
underneath 55 degrees in a lot of the northeast and as the water cools the further south you go there's a lot of different structure that you can fish it on not just out deep you could hop it on shallow rock bars and shell bars and eight to 15 foot of water and you could probably catch a lot of bass doing it that way so if you're new here on the youtube uh, hit that subscribe button leave a comment down below what your favorite blade bait is and where you fish a blade bait if you're like down in the south somewhere and you enjoy it let me know i've had some clients tell me about blade bait fishing in a couple like mid-southern states that sounds like way too much fun and they catch absolute giant fish on them so i'm always intrigued to hear what our viewers are doing and then if you're on spotify or apple podcasts or any other mp3 podcast platform please leave us a review if the platform allows you to do so allows this podcast to be seen to more people who love to talk, love to listen and learn about bass fishing. We are always thankful for everyone who tunes in here on a weekly basis. And we look forward to seeing everyone next Saturday.